Max capacity is approximately four tons a day. You're probably wondering why are we outside of our usual testing facility, but you're about to see why. Today we have 10 plates, steel column, which is right under the hammer and it's ready for testing. So we are going to do that together. Let's see that big boy. Five hundred liters. Today we are making gin. This is gin baskets. It's a place where you put your herb and spice mix, so you can infuse the distillation with aromas typical for making gin if you're making one and you should fill it up two-thirds of it, its capacity. So that's what are we doing right now. Make sure this valve is properly closed. The mesh is already in the still. The process of distillation has started and during which I will talk about the characteristics of the still. Net capacity is 500 liters volume per charge for optimal performance. This multi-purpose pod is designed for making different alcohol beverages. It obtains a high proof of alcohol in a single run. This still is powered by electricity with 36 kilowatts per hour and it has four heaters, nine kilowatts each. But depending on our customers' individual requirements, it can be powered by solid fuels, gas, with approximately 25 to 110 kilowatts capacity gas burners, LPG or natural gas, or it can be steam heating uh, with steam generator. Also, we can make combos of these types of heating depending on, like we said, your individual requirements. Let's talk about furnace features. We have stainless steel furnace with a water bath or water steam jacket. And this is referred to the space between the copper and outside layer of stainless steel. Uh, it will be filled up with water to the inspection glass and the steam will fill out the rest of the space we have in it. Uh, once the hot water reaches the boiling point, uh, the steam will cover up the rest of the space. The furnace can also be filled with oil, so you can get to the boiling point of oil and heat it up in that manner, but we will cover that option in some other video. This one is water filled. This furnace has a three centimeter of stone wool insulation. It prevents the heat from going to the surrounding area. And this will drastically reduce the time you need to spend and energy for each and every cycle. Electric heaters are inserted directly into the water and they heat up the water up to the boiling point. Once the water starts to boil, it will heat the rest of the steam to approximately 110 degrees of Celsius, which can be monitored on the control panel. And it's operating with a low pressure with 0.5 bars, which can be monitored right here and it's regulated by safety valve right behind it. 
power is controlled by these switches using 3 kilowatts each and we have a switch for the electric motor which steers the mesh although it's always recommended to turn it on and not touch it until the end of distillation because it will steer the mesh through the whole process. Also we have a control table that gives us the four digits which are four temperatures. The first one is the temperature in the water bath, second one is temperature of the mesh, third one is a temperature of uh, in the connecting pipe that connects the column and the cooler and of course the exiting temperature of the spirit. And we have an emergency stop button but don't use it if you don't have to. The pot is manufactured from pure electrolytic copper. Inside, the mesh is steered by the mixer blades which are positioned diagonal. Mixing is powered by an electric motor that runs at 96 RPM. It achieves a good circulation of the mesh, providing a constant contact of the hot surface on the inside and equally heats the entire mass, ensuring a very efficient extraction of alcoholic vapors from the mesh itself. Upper part of the cap provides a large surface and volume for vapors to interact with the copper and condensate, providing a very good initial reflux. This process is very important in the production of quality spirits. Once extracted, the vapors will start passing through one or two columns. They are specially made for beverages like rum or gin and they are made to preserve the smell and taste while achieving maximum smoothness. Achieving this smoothness is done by free contact of vapor and reflux. Condensed liquid coming from the deflagmator in the column itself, better they get uh, into the 10 bubble plates below. So this process is repeated 10 times over and over or less, depending on the kind of spirit you're making. The spirit coming out of the steel comes with the same characteristics as we have from the traditional setup, only half time. The most specific thing about this steel is its multi-purpose. You can use both columns for distillation, columns and gin baskets, only one column as well as one column and gin basket. You choose the function, depending on the beverage or the recipe you have, you can change the number of bubble plates that you are using by opening these valves, like this. Easy as that. This is the deflagmator. It provides an initial condensation of vapors and it will uh, separate the alcoholic vapors from the water and other vapors. It does so by regulating the flow of the temperature. Water from deflagmator is going to this hot water tank, which has a capacity of 300 liters. This hot water tank is connected with a SIP cleaning system. So this hot water is reused for cleaning the steel at the end. Of course, uh, the rest will be drained away in the sewer. Back to our vapor trail. Once the vapors reaches the top, of the column. They go through the deflagmator, through the gym basket and into the condensator or the cooling system. In the cooling system we have connected inlets for cold water and outlets for hot water. So we have two deflagmators so we have two valves. One for the left and another for the right column. The consumption of water may vary depending on your outlet source. The steel is also equipped with collection tanks. It has three sections and the first section here is 150 liter uh, net capacity and it's made for uh, collecting the methyl alcohol or the head collector. It is followed by the second section which is made for uh, tail collection and the last is 500 liters uh, ethyl alcohol collection tank and they all have volume meters so you can trail how much 
are there filled. And this works by three-way valve and it facilitates an easy separation of alcoholic fractions by redirecting the flow, just easy as that. And you would redirect it to each individual vessel. Easy enough. Just a little reminder, uh, regardless of what is in your mesh and what is its capacity, one percentage of the flow should be divided for the metal alcohol. And for today's presentation, we made gin and when the volume per volume percentage dropped below 55, we stopped the flow to, from going to ethyl alcohol and changed it to go to the tape. So, once the distillation is over, we will turn off the heaters and call it a day. This is how we make gin. I believe you learned something from today's presentation. Even if you didn't, I hope you enjoyed it. As you can see, we are working very hard to improve your product and make your distillation as easy as it can get. That's all for today. Let me know what do you distill. Leave the comment below. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already. And of course, if you need any kind of information or any kind of advice, you can contact us. Follow the link in the description and in the left corner you can see our previous videos. I will see you the next time. Bye bye.